Hello everyone and good to see you for a new weekly meditation. The subject for this week is whose wife will she be or whose husband will he be? The arrogance of the knowledge. The text chosen as the basis of today's meditation is a short one, but it provokes many questions. It is a fragment taken from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 12, verses 18 to 27. Christians agree that we cannot think about spiritual realities by trying to understand them using the measures we apply to life in the body, to the material life. When the Sadducees asked Jesus whose wife will be the one who had seven brothers as husband, who died one after the other, leaving the woman a widow, they do not look for an answer. They are not able to think beyond the measure applied to the material world, to life in the flesh. And they are simply convinced that what they cannot think or understand doesn't not exist. How arrogant do we have to be to believe that, that what we can't understand doesn't exist. And yet how many of our fellows unfortunately think that? Jesus sends the Sadducees directly to the text of the scriptures which they quote in their celebration and teachings. He reminds them that the God they proclaim is the God of Abraham, the living, not the dead. It was not his God, it is his God. He is a God of the living. It is clear that here Jesus is talking about Abraham in the flesh and after his death as well. He shows that this is a relationship that is continuous and has not been just for a while. If we do not understand this, it does not mean that it is not true. How arrogant could we be to consider that the measure of our understanding is proof of the existence of something we understand and proof of the non-existence of something we do not understand. That was the arrogance, the mistake of the Sadducees. Friends, students, members of the communities where I used to work accepted that we cannot use our understanding as proof of the existence or non-existence of something, but always remained one question. But what about the uniqueness of the relationship of love, marriage? Here they are right. Every relationship has an uniqueness. It cannot be compared to any other. We can build relationship with everyone around us. But our relationship with each other is different from any other with another person. We cannot simply ask or answer whose wife or husband or friend we will be because it is not a possession relationship. It is a simply relationship of existence. And existence has different forms in the bodily, material life and certainly 
has different forms in the spiritual life in which we believe and which we confess even if we are not yet able to understand it. I was just talking about the uniqueness of each relationship. To better understand, let's call all kind of interpersonal relationship love. Our love is not of the same nature in relation to each individual. Now let's start love into color. We all know that white is the combination of the whole spectrum of colors when we talk about light. Let us call light the interpersonal relationship and the relationship with God as everything, universal, not individual. But we will see that in this white light of universal relationship with people and as humanity with God appears billions of color, tones of interpersonal relationship and individual relationship with God. In his novel, The Shack, Paul Young explained this reality so beautifully. He wrote, Suppose that you are hanging out with a friend at your local coffee shop. You are focused on your companion and if you had eyes to see, the two of you would be enveloped in an array of colors and light, which mark not only your uniqueness as individuals, but also the uniqueness of the relationship between you and the emotions you'd be experiencing in that very moment. Again, he invited. Suppose that another person whom you love enters the coffee shop. A unique combination of color and light would leave you and wrap itself around the one who had just entered, representing you in another form of loving and greeting that one. And we know that the story presented by the Sadducees is quite absurd. But even so, the woman's marriage relationship is clearly different with each of the alleged spouses. It can be the same because they are, they were different people. What the Sadducees want to deny is the resurrection because they do not perceive the resurrection of body. It's the same arrogance. They do not accept it because they do not understand. We confess that we believe in the resurrection of the dead. How it will be happen? How it will happen? We do not know. We do not understand. Jesus points out the Sadducees. You are badly mistaken. We don't know what it will be like. We do not have the necessary terms to describe the life after death. We cannot use the same terms we use to understand the material world. Let us give up the arrogance of our knowledge and let us love in the humble joy of each day, in every single day, in the belief that our love is eternal. This certainly helps 
especially in this day, full of uncertainty due to the chaos caused by the pandemic. Thank you for your attention and God bless us all in love and joy every day in hope.